So in today's video, we thought we would talk you through our plans for Camp Out West and also answer all the questions you've been sending in. So question number one, which we've been getting the most, is how did we find the land that we've purchased? So we actually spent two years searching for land to buy. We used to look on all the normal places you'd look for land, like Zoopla on the market. Yeah, Gumtree, right move. Right move, just everything. And we'd also drive around where we lived and find uh, places we'd like the look of and would go on the land registry website and pay to find who owned it and then write them letters as well. And we had no luck at all trying to find anything. No, we had a few responses where people were just like, the land's just been left, like, but we, they have no interest in selling it or whatever. And it was funny, every other week I'd be saying to John, oh, where's this? I've booked us a viewing and we'd go and go and view fields like in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Like farmland, <laughs> like some of the some of the people would say that you could live on, which it turns out you couldn't. We had a few that were like actual, like there was an old dairy farm that had a chalet on it, which, yeah, within, yeah, I guess like 10 minutes from where we are now, but they couldn't actually prove that we could live there. Um, so there was a lot of time sort of what invested in going around, meeting with agents, looking at land, and then a lot of it was just... Dead ends, really. Dead ends, really, yeah. So then I thought I would just start asking in local Facebook groups around where we live, and I started posting in it every other week in about 10 to 15 groups, all the same thing, just asking if anyone was selling two to three acres of land local to us. And then one day a lady responded and said, oh, I'm selling um, the old abandoned caravan park and I didn't know where it was even though it was 15 minutes away from where we were living I had never seen it so I asked John if he knew where it was yeah um, my, my family and like at the time my grandfather was living only three minutes away from here so whenever we'd come and visit him we'd come past this this area and um, so I, I knew it like clearly like from the road all you can see is the worst looking caravan that's here like an old shed like tarpaulins like hung up in the trees and stuff like proper horror movie sort of stuff so straight away I was just like not happening like that's nothing we want to be involved with well his answer I was like should we go and view it and his reply was hell no are we going to view that yeah so we didn't <laughs> and then a year passed and we were still looking for land and I was still posting in the groups and the same lady responded to me and said oh the land is still for sale if you want to come and view it and we just decided well it's so close to John's granddad we might as well just come and have a look around yeah and then yeah we came to the land literally pulled up you know what it was then was actually just like a gap in the hedge um, and that was what is now our driveway <laughs> and then uh, yeah we just had a good walk around and we realized like how big the plot was like you know we could probably work with what was here and then we were like cool let's, let's go for it <laughs> and uh, yeah and then we started the long process then of buying it question two what was the caravan site used for and why was it abandoned so this site was never a holiday park or anything like that. It was, it was a residential caravan site for the miners that work in the coal mine across the street. Uh, that's the, the coal mine was one of the biggest ones in South Wales. Uh, that's where one of my grandfathers also used to work. So at one point there were 20 static caravans here. And at one point I think about 100 touring caravans uh, with people from all over Europe that came over here to work in the mines. The, the mines then closed in 1989 and then one of the, the miners purchased the site and he left here 10 years ago and that's why it's just been left to go wild. Nobody's lived here for 10 years. <laughs> Question three is how big is the land? So the land is just under three acres in size. It's mainly overgrown grassland and we've got a few oak trees scattered over and a woodland too. Question number four is what services does the land have? So because there were hundreds of people living here at one point, we're lucky that there's you know, fresh water, electricity, a phone line, and then the best part is we've got like fully working sewerage system. And while we've been driving through all this old overgrown grass, we found these concrete platforms, which were the old outhouses behind the, the static caravans. And they've all got like a waste pipe that runs you know, into the drains, which is really handy. Yeah, we were really lucky actually. I think this was the main selling point for us when we decided to go for the land because a lot of um, land we were looking at didn't have any services at all and to get sewers and electricity yeah, fitted... Yeah, it's like silly money. Like tens of thousands of pounds. So when we found out it had this, it was kind of like a... Yeah, that's, that was the one that made us choose it really. Yeah. Question five is do we have planning permission? So as this site has always been a residential caravan park, we bought it with permissions already in place to continue being a residential caravan park. And we also had our solicitors check this over to make sure what we were buying already had all the permissions and plans in place that we needed. Yeah, a lot of the land that we'd looked at was agricultural land or 
agricultural land with a, a chalet or something on and unless you're involved in agriculture or timber works or that sort of stuff it's really difficult to actually live permanently on agricultural land so that's why I think we're really lucky that we found this place. Yeah because I know a lot of people might try and risk building a house or a tiny house on land that doesn't have permission but it's so so hard to actually be allowed to live in it the long term so that wasn't something we really wanted to risk. Yeah, so but yeah we, did, we, didn't, we don't have the money to play around and like buy land and then get told that we can't live there. Like, yeah and try and apply for planning after so the fact that this already had planning in place first and we knew we could definitely live on it yeah. that's the main reason why we bought it like we're registered for council tax like we're, we're paying <laughs> the council to live here so we're just residents here yeah so i think if you're looking to buy land if you can find land that already has um caravans on it and has permissions in place or a certificate of lawfulness that is like your golden ticket to say you are allowed to live in it yeah but it's hard to find yeah but it's hard to find <laughs> yeah. question six was how much did you pay for the land and how did you afford to pay for it outright we paid £90,000 for the land. We afforded to buy the land outright because we bought a property uh, 15 minutes away from here in the local town in 2017. It was our first house as well. Yeah, <laughs> for £89,000 uh, with a mortgage. We sort of did a bit of renovation and stuff on the house and with like the current prices of houses, we sold that at a profit. Um, so once we paid off our mortgage, we had the money from the house, we also had some savings and we also sold all of the contents of our house, like <laughs> literally everything, like our plants, our picture frames, bed, furniture. All of our rugs. Everything, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's how we had enough money to buy the land and once we purchased it, we literally had £500 in the bank. <laughs> question number eight is, do you work and what do you do? So we've been asked this question the most and I think it's because most people just assume and people have even said that we must just be getting money from our parents and come from really rich families, which we don't, we do work. So we're self-employed. Our day job, uh, we are wedding photographers and videographers. We run a business called The Wild Bride and we've been capturing weddings across the world for the last five years together. And then during lockdown when everything came to a halt and weddings stopped we went from shooting 45 weddings a year to just half of one and we had to figure out figure out how we were going to make money to pay our mortgage uh, so we spent our savings and we launched some new businesses and the first business we launched was called Levain store which is our uh, unisex hat brand which is what i always wear in our videos and then we launched our second brand made on the open road which john's wearing yeah so we, we launched motor it's kind of like a motorcycle, road trip, sort of lifestyle brand, a little bit of surf inspired. Um, in our previous jobs, before we went self-employed, we both worked in the surf industry uh, for kind of like surf lifestyle brands. Emily worked for Billabong, um, Board Masters Festival. Um, I used to be the European studio manager in the photography studio for Billabong. I used to do work for Ruka and Element as well. And that's where like we've got the, the interest in that side of stuff, which is why we launched Motor. And then we've also got a candle brand that we started doing lockdown. We needed to find a way to make money. So we went on YouTube and looked out how do we make like uh, soya wax candles. Um, and we've been doing that now for like two and a bit years. Yeah, and we love it. Uh, so yeah, we have a warehouse um, about half an hour away from here, which we rent from the council and we run our online stores from there. So yeah, we have four of our businesses, which is our wedding photography work, which is our main job. And then we do our three online stores on the side. So that is how we are paying to do all the renovations on the land. Yeah. And also because our day jobs are our priority, it means like Monday to Sunday, we're really busy with our day jobs and shooting weddings. And then on our free time, we are renovating the land. Yeah. Question number 10 is why aren't you repairing the old caravans or selling them? So I'm not sure if you've seen how the caravans are right now and their condition, but they are really past the point of repair. and. I don't think anyone would want to buy them because all the chassis are completely rotten as well so you'd really struggle to even move them off the land which is why we're having to break them down and they are just completely unlivable so it would just cost too much and just be no point in repairing them. Yeah they're completely like uneconomical to repair and if we even tried to remove them from where they are like the chassis would literally just fall apart <laughs> so yeah there's no point. So that's why we're not trying to restore them or sell them. Question 12, why did you decide on Wales and this area in particular? We decided on Wales and this area. So I'm from Wales originally. Uh, we met in university in South Wales. 
and Emily's mother and grandmother side of the family they're from the Swansea area so not that far from us this actual local area here we're only 15 minutes from where we've been living for the last four years and probably five minutes from here is where my whole family like going back generations and generations is from so this is kind of coming back to where like the roots of my family is it's really cool as well because we're at the end of a residential street and john's still got family like a few houses down from here yeah and also john is a first language welsh speaker so he gets to speak the most welsh i think he's spoken such a long time where we are yeah it's really good question 13 why aren't you using proper tools <laughs> We've had so many people angrily message us and comment to us asking why we are using cheap rubbish tools. Yeah, why am I using a hand <laughs> saw? And it's purely because we do not have the money to buy better yeah. tools at the moment. We spent all of our money on buying the land and most tools are just completely out of our budget at the moment. Yeah, like there's, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't see the point in buying like low quality tools just to get going. I'd rather save up, invest in tools that are going to serve us for the next five, ten years. Yeah, so and a lot of people have been asking why we're not paying for skips, why we're not paying for diggers to break down the caravans. It's so much money to get a skip and to just get something to break something down when for us to put it in our van, it's free. Yeah. And for us to break down the caravans, it takes our time, but we already have like cheap tools that actually do the job rather than hiring like a, a digger or something to just smash down the caravans. It's yeah. just too much money that at the moment we can't afford. Yeah. Also, other people are suggesting we set fire to the caravans. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible idea. Uh, because they're made of you know, really thin timber, aluminium. You know, it's, there's not a lot to them. If you literally light them on fire, they'll just warp and twist. And then we'll still have to cut them up after. Yeah, we still have to try and get rid of them that way. So yeah. the, the way we're doing it, it's we can afford it. And we know we can recycle them and get rid of them responsibly. Yeah. Question 14 is what breed is your dog? <laughs> we love this question because so many people like to guess Maggie's breed in the comments and most people think she's a Great Dane. Like a Great Dane Harlequin <laughs> puppy. Um, and a lot of people think she's a Spaniel. Yeah, that's had a shave. That's how, yeah, that's had a, had a haircut. Yeah. Um, but she's actually uh, an English pointer crossed with an Italian pointer. Yeah. And we got her, she was um, one of the last in the litter and the people that were going to buy her had fallen through. Um, and we went to look at her and fell in love. <laughs> But yeah, she's an English pointer. You don't see many, um, and they're like the most loveliest breed. They're very affectionate, they're very needy. Yeah, they're known as a Velcro dog, so mm -hmm. very much needs human contact at all times. Yeah, so which is what we love. We love having her with us all the time, yeah. every day. And as we kind of expose more of the overgrown bits of land, like she's loving hunting around and like mm -hmm. looking for stuff, so. Yeah, so Maggie is a three-year-old English pointer crossed with an Italian pointer, but she looks, I would say, 100% English pointer. Yeah. So question 15 is what are your plans for the site? So our vision for Camp at West at the moment we are currently trying to clear all the overgrowth um, and just make it a more accessible space because you would have seen when we came in everything was so overgrown we couldn't even walk around the whole land so that's what John's been doing the last week is really just clearing all the overgrowth so we can get a clear idea of what's here. Yeah, it's quite hard for us to make plans on where things are going to go because we haven't literally walked <laughs> on all the land yet. And then next stage will be breaking down all the caravans that were on the site and then we're going to have a completely blank canvas and because we're allowed to have three residential park homes on the site we're going to start building the first one which we are hopefully ordering our chassis next week and when that arrives then we can start the work on building the cabin before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really want to spend like British winter up on a hillside <laughs> in a little touring caravan and the walls are about, you know, they're probably not even an inch, they're like an inch thick um, and it also cost a fortune to keep it warm. So ideally we're going to be in our little cabin, yeah, for Christmas. Yeah, for Christmas and then once we've done that then we can build two more. Um, so in the long term we will have two cabins that we will rent out as holiday lets and then we will live in the third one. And then we'd also love, in this area that we're sat in now, we'd love to do seasonal glamping. Um, and I'll insert a picture of our inspiration here that we've had mocked up. And then up where we did the shipping container, um, we would love to have our like garden and vegetable patch up there as well. And then it's just like improving on the land. Obviously it's been left for so long, there's like endless weeds and stuff that we need to kind of get under control. It's just making it better than what it was. Yeah. So that is the end of our first Q&A session at Camp Up West. 
We have been really quiet on renovations for the last month just because we've been really busy with our day jobs. Yeah, it's been wedding season, so we've been like fully into that. Yeah, we've been shooting back-to-back -back weddings all over the UK, literally driving thousands of miles each week and then editing when we're not shooting. So we come to the end of our really busy season from next week, so then renovations will start again. Yeah. Uh, we try to answer the most commonly asked questions. I'm sure we've got other questions, <laughs> so if you want to put them in the comments section below and we will try and answer them as best as we can. Yep, and then if you tune in from next week, renovations will be starting again. We start smashing shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.